So you've performed your Gibson ligation, clone a gene, whatever, did your transformation, and you see colonies and you see success. And there's nothing feels better than a successful cloning attempt. So what's next? Well, every single one of those colonies could be different. Some are going to carry the gene that you clone and some are not. In order to pick colonies, you're gonna require a plate with the proper antibiotic. Uh, I go lazy way, I just write the numbers on there, but if you wanna be clever uh, and more organized, you can draw lines and make a proper grid. Now Kai has done something super clever. She has written her uh, numbers backwards. So when you flip the plate over, you'll see the numbers forward. Whenever I pick clones, I like to spray my hands with ethanol because I'm afraid of contamination, right? So just spray, spray, give yourself a little hand for having sprayed ethanol and you're good to go. Now sometimes all you're gonna do is pick clones, but other times you're also gonna to wanna to start an overnight for a plasma prep the next day. So I have a bunch of tubes all pre-labeled, uh, add the appropriate amount of antibiotic to each tube and we're good to go. So I already added in the seven others. Grab your toothpicks and now here comes the fun part. Make sure that you handle one end of the toothpick and use the other end, the sterile end, to pick your colonies. Try to pick a colony that's very well isolated off by itself and do this. Draw a little diagonal line. I like to put my finger on the number where I'm gonna put it so that I know where to make a stripe. And then just drop your toothpick into the broth. And then repeat this process for all the clones that you wanna pick. Just note that the colonies you choose have to be well isolated, separated from each other. Make sure that you don't pick any that are touching each other or very close because you want to pick individual clones. Otherwise, you can run the risk of picking multiple clones in the same colony and getting ambiguous results. So I ended up using four colonies to start overnight cultures with, and these I will use to purify plasmid uh, tomorrow so then I can screen them for my clones. However, I do want to pick more just in case if those four that I picked turn out to be negative, and I do anticipate that they're going to be positive. You always get a sense of how effective your or efficient your cloning is going to be, but sometimes you know, you're not quite sure. So I do pick extras just in case. Um, 10 is a nice even number, so I'm just going to go and pick a bunch of other colonies, making sure that uh, in the event that uh, the four that I chose were all negative, I do have some more to screen from, and I figure given the probability of this, somewhere within the 10, I definitely should have what I want. All the inoculated media need to be incubated. The tubes go into a shaking incubator. The shaking helps aerate it so then it can get maximal growth. Uh, I like to have a loose cap, so I'll close the cap, I'll put it in the shaker, and then just roll back just a tiny bit, just so then there can be a little bit of oxygen exchange. Um, but the cap still stays on tight, so don't loosen it too much. Uh, at the same time, don't crank it closed. Although, I know people that do crank it closed, and you know both of us seem to get the same results, but uh, you know these are the habits that I've learned. This is what I do. Simply close it and just make sure that it's shaking. If it's shaking, we're all good to go. And the plate goes into the incubator, also set at 37. Be sure that it's turned on, and we will see all of these tomorrow. And let's check on our plate the next morning. We should see growth along the lines that we made. And yay, now we have 10 clones of each that we can use for future plasma preps if we need. And speaking of plasma preps, what we'd like to see here is cloudiness or turbidity, and we do. And so this is now ready to isolate plasma from.